Hi everybody, it's Cheryl from Yikes, I'm a Chicken Mom. And here are the new babies. Uh, we picked them up Monday. Today's Thursday, so this is day four. And we've been having a little bit of trauma with our little gal right here. That's the Salmon Favorel, and her name is Flora. And uh, all the other chicks, I've got a total of four. Um, the other three are thriving. I've got an olive egger. I have a silver gray dorking and a Swedish flower hen. That's the little Swedish flower hen right there. And her name is Freckles. And oh my goodness, she is a sweetie. They are all just sweet. But anyway, little Flora, the little yellow one, way back there. She's been having some issues, and as you can see right now, she's up, she's alert. That's her chirping. Um, she has not been thriving near as well as the other ones. And what I have found with her is she wanted to sleep. Um, she wouldn't come out from under the brooder. I mean, very rare does she come out. Um, and she was just sleeping. She wasn't eating, she wasn't drinking, and I really wasn't concerned because I knew they could survive for three days without anything other than that yolk sac they had absorbed right before they hatched. But um, yesterday evening, I called the hatchery that I, I she what they weren't mailed to me. I picked up my chicks. And so I knew, you know, there was no stress from the mail. Um, but she just wasn't thriving. I almost thought maybe she was blind at one point um, because she just couldn't seem to find the nipple on the water that I use. She couldn't seem to uh, figure out the hole, you know, in the feeder. Um, I have two kinds of feeders right now. I have the traditional feeder right here. Then I have this little red birdhouse that I use right here, which I really love. And this is what eventually they'll all go to. I have the traditional water right here, and then I have the nipple water here. So uh, what I do as soon as everybody's comfortably eating from the little red house and the nipple water, every, the other food sources are going to go away. Uh, what I find about this little red house, as a side note, is that it you don't end up with a mess like that in your floor. But anyway, back to little Flora. Uh, if you look in the mirror, you can see she's the little yellow one underneath the eco glow. So uh, I called the hatchery and I told them, I said, you know, she might be blind. I don't know. I, I just don't know what's going on. So um, they said, try giving her some, either like some warm plain yogurt, add some water, a sugar to her water. And they told me to add one tablespoon of sugar to one and a half quarts of water, which is what I did. And then I did more, I did, that's what I did last night. And the sugar water is to rally them and give them a little bit of um, a boost, a jump start. I'm gonna zoom in like that so you can kind of see them underneath that eco glow. Just to give them a little bit of jump start so maybe they'll come out and eat. Well, she would come out, she would come over to that pile of food I just showed you on the floor, but she really wouldn't, she would peck. But I never did, I couldn't decide if she was really eating or not. So today she was like a little lump of a little deflated pillow underneath the eco glow this morning. So I got the sugar water and I was able to entice her to drink some sugar water. And I had done some research and I took a egg yolk. Well, actually I boiled an egg and I took the egg yolk and I mashed it up and I I uh, sprinkled a little bit of their um, little vitamins that you, you get when they're babies to go in their water. I sprinkled a little of that on there and I mixed up the egg yolk until it was like really runny and then like uh, a little thicker than water but not much. And then I had, you know, one of these little syringe things. You know, you guys have all seen these things in my drawer. So I would uh, suck that up the food up in there and boy she went at that she really liked that 
and I could tell that really helped her like almost immediately to have that. And then I gave her a little more sugar water, but I knew I had to be careful with the sugar water because you give a chick sugar water, it can cause diarrhea. So, you know, I wanted her off that sugar water as soon as possible because I didn't want to compound my problem. So then, um, I, then I made a mess on her little fuzz under her face. I, that egg had gotten all over her. I tried wiping it off with a white paper towel. I put her back in the brooder and what I saw were the other chickens noticed it and man they were trying to yank her little down off of her neck. I thought oh no can't have that. So I scooped her back up out of there and off we went and she got a little neck bath with Dawn detergent and rinsed her good and then we had to go upstairs and blow her neck dry and I got a little toothbrush and was trying to real careful and gently lift up the little fur so it could get dry. Oh boy. Then I decided well I'm just going to take some scissors and cut that fluff down a little bit so it's not so hard to dry because it was just like sticking together so and I couldn't get it separated to dry it. So we came back down I put her under the eco glow and in the meantime I thought you know what I am going to boil up another egg and this time I'm going to make it about the consistency of toothpaste and bingo that was the ticket because now um, I'll show you what I've got here. I've got a wider, this, it's got a wider tube in it on the top, a wider opening in the top. And I'll tell you the, sorry, can't see that. But anyway, it, um, then we hold it straight up like this and we push the bottom and it just pushes it out a little bit. There's a terrible glare and a terrible blur. And that egg just kind of like comes up the top and she reaches up for it. So that has been working out well. And she's been uh, running around a little more lively. Um, she's been doing better. So I'm hoping this is the beginning of some good things for her. <laughs> you see, which one are you? That's the silver gray dorking there. Her name is Dorcas, isn't it? Look at that face. She is adorable. And the little brown chipmunk one there that's kind of in the front, that's our olive egger. Her name is Olive. And the little gal here. Whoop, oh, whoop, oh, just got up right there. That is our, went just out of my mind, Swedish flower hen. And my grandson named her Freckles. And that's because with a Swedish flower hen, I didn't know much about Swedish flower hens. I never had this any of these breeds, but she um, will have the characteristic of her is that all her breed they have speckles, kind of like a speckled Sussex. They have those old spots, so he decided he was going to name her Freckles. But right now it's pretty quiet in the brooder, and we have opened up this side to the pine chips, and oh my goodness, they've been having a grand time with that. Um, They've been kicking, scratching, and looking for things. They find out maybe a little piece of dark litter in there, and they'll run over to the edge and back onto the paper towel and lay it down and explore it. And the next ones come up like, what you got? What you got? So they're just so cute. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to share how I've been treating this little chick, and hopefully it will help somebody else. Um, but I, you can see there she is out again from NAP. And that's her cheeping. <laughs> she didn't last long, did she? But but she is doing so much better. I'm just so pleased. So if anybody's having trouble with their chicks, that's what worked for her. Um, at least so far, so good. We're keeping our fingers crossed. And I have been praying some little prayers for my chicken. Hoping that she'll pull through and gain her strength. So anyway, I just wanted to share that in case it's a help to somebody. And keep us in your thoughts and prayers that we continue to improve. Okay, thank you everybody. Appreciate it.